meetings now called to order. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Fowler. <laughs> Commissioner Scribner. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner Morris. Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Here. Okay, we're now on to um, our pledge. Commissioner Mello, would you read us on our pledge, please? Salute. Salute. Pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we're on to number three, approval of the minutes for the February 27th, 2019 meeting. I move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. Or, <laughs> uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. We're on to number four, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has their jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. I see no uh, public comments. We're on to number five, uh, notice of public hearings. 5A, Kern Lafco, 2019-20 preliminary budget. Uh, uh, Mr. Knox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Am I on? Good. It helps when I turn the mic on. Uh, before you is the proposed 2019-2020 Lafco budget. State law requires that preliminary budget be adopted prior to the consideration of a final budget. Final budget is due on June 15, 2019. The overall preliminary budget will be very similar to previous years with a proposed 6% increase. I expect a similar number of annexations, detachment, reorganizations, MSRs, and sphere of influences uh, in the next fiscal year, but I also expect that the items before the commission will, will be more complicated. First, I'll go through the, use, the revenues, then I'll go through the expenses and uh, kind of give you the, the highlights. Uh, user fees will likely be the same. Agents, agency contributions, uh, which we get a third from the county, a third from special districts, and a third from the cities. Uh, this is collected by the county. This number is adjusted from the carryover from this current year, as well as the funds that were reimbursed earlier this year when it was discovered the county has set, had assessed based on both a budget and a reserve that we had already had already collected. I'm not ha I do not have a carryover number at this time, but I will when we get to the final final budget uh, or something close to it. I also expect that the state will reimburse us for the dissolution of Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD and the annexation of Northwest Kern RCD before the end of the fiscal year. Our expenses came in around $20,000 for that project and expect to be reimbursed for about $15,000. Uh, CalAFCO has a bill to provide funding uh, over the next few years for additional projects like this. So there is other funding opportunities that are coming our way, potentially. On the expenditure sides, uh, we have salaries and uh, FICA. This amounts to the three full-time employees, the executive officer, uh, senior analyst, and the ministry of assistant clerk, as well as a part-time receptionist, which is currently not being filled. Salaries show a rise due to the increase in salary approved by the commission for the executive officer. And based on the quality of work, the EL recommends an increase in salary for the senior analyst, effective at the start of the fiscal year. The administrative assistant and clerk, uh, we have an interesting time coming for us. Uh, yesterday, Gianna notified me that she's accepted a position elsewhere, and so we are actively looking for a new administrative assistant and clerk. Um, we put out advertisements um, both on our, our, our webpage, 
on several um, online uh, job sites. I've already received 40, 43 resumes and have two um, interviews already scheduled for the next couple days. So we're moving fast on this. Uh, Gianna has a limited time while she's still with us, and it would be great if we could hire someone quickly so she can help train that person. Uh, she's also volunteered, well, I'm not sure volunteer is the right word. Uh, she's willing to work, do a little part-time work outside of hours to help train someone as we go further down, down the road. Uh, I, I would like to be able to use some of that um, um, funding from the um, receptionist to pay, pay for that. Uh, it's always good to have the best training we can while we still have her available to, to do that. So that is big news for us. So I'm losing half my staff. <laughs> uh, state retirement, LAFCO has budgeted uh, the employer portion of retirement, which will be 15.206 <coughs> for the new fiscal year at the cl classical member rate. LAFCO employees pay 100% of the employee portion, which is 8%. This number of, is the employer portion only this item also includes the amount now required by CalPERS to pay down any unfunded liability. And for this year, it's gonna be 49,748 and closer to 56,000 next year. So those numbers continue to rise, whether you know, we don't have really have a say in that. Our employer group insurance, uh, this includes a set amount each, covered each employee receives in health benefits for the year, plus any estimated rollover from, from previous years. Although the number looks high, only a portion is used each year. Please keep in mind that employees re are reimbursed by LAFCO for 20% 20 20 of all healthcare uh, benefits used. Uh, workers' comp compensation insurance through SDRMA will be approximately the same. Our general uh, liability insurance will rise a little to just about $5,000. Our memberships are in CalAFCO and California Special Districts Association. CalAFCO increased their dues by approximately $1,000 and will likely do that again this next year. They've been operating out of their, um, their reserve funds the last couple of years and they've got to start raising some of the fees again. I expect the office expenses to be the same. Uh, the rent, um, our, our lease on our office space is up in May. I am acti actively looking for new space, but I've not found the right location yet. The increase is an educated guess as to the possible increase in rent, but since I don't have a location yet, I don't know if that is a real number or not. So hopefully we have about six, six weeks left. It's really now crunch time to find, find a spot if we're going to move. Um, and the current property management is calling me on a daily basis wanting to, us to sign a new lease, and I'm not ready to do that yet. Uh, purchasing card, we no longer use this category. Those expenses are now showed in office expense. Uh, professional and specialized services, uh, this item is for commissioner stipends, audits, legal counsel, bookkeeping, HR service, services, KGov, reports, and, and lists from the assessor and elections as well as any specialized consulting services that may be needed by the commission. With a rise in the audit and accounting expenses, the budget for this category was increased. Transportation and travel, with a strong turnout with CalAFCO annual conference, three employees now attending workshops and the executive officer on the CalAFCO legislative committee. This category is getting well used and will need additional funds to stay within budget going forward. On the reserves, uh, the commission policy is for a 10% uh, of the annual budget plus accrued sick and vacation time has been accounted for in the budget but has not been paid out. The budget reserve for last year will increase by $3,980 if you approve this budget. Uh, last year's sick and vacation accrued equal 21,653. Uh, a calculation based on our last payroll puts this year's at 25,883 but I also expect to be paying out Gianna here at the end for her, for her portion, so that number actually will go down uh, once she gets paid out. Uh, with that is my recommendation that we uh, receive uh, comments and for the revised, to revise the budget as well as uh, 
as requested by the commission and bring this back next month for final approval. Do we have any uh, public comment on this? It's now time if the public would like to make a comment. If not, do the commissions have any com commissioners have any comments or questions? If not, we'll call for a motion, please. I'll go for a motion to approve and bring back next month. Second. Uh, may we have your vote, please? Motion approved, all ayes. We're now on to 5B. 1743 Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District results of protest hearing on annexation number 01 and sphere of influence amendment. Mr. Knox? Yes. A protest was hearing on Monday, March 25th, and that's my report. No one showed up. So we, we had no protests uh, by either the public or any other agencies. So this one is ready to go forward with uh, your uh, approval, and it's my recommendation that we move this one forward. I'll move approval. Second. Cast your votes, please. <clears throat> Motion approved, all ayes. Uh, public um, number five, six, uh, public uh, project review. 1746, City of McFarland, annexation number 17. Mr. Knox? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is my recommendation that we continue this item. Uh, we did not meet the deadline uh, for notifying affected agencies. Once we got the final uh, tax split agreement with the county, um, so we didn't meet our deadlines. We, we thought we had and realized afterwards we hadn't. So uh, McFarland is aware this is gonna be continued till next month and we would like to bring it back at the next meeting. You need a motion to do that? Yes, please. So moved. Second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Uh, number seven, commission items. Does the commissioners have any uh, items they'd like to discuss? If not, We'll move on to uh, number eight, general business. Um, number 8A, approval of the claims list number 19-03. Move approval. I'll second that. Okay, a motion made by uh, Commissioner, um, confused here. Couch. Couch. Okay, <laughs> and second by Mello. Um, uh, 8B, California State Legislative Report, uh, Mr. No, Knox. Oh, we, we have to vote. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. 8B, California State Legislative Report, Mr. Knox. Yes. The California State Legislature passed uh, their first deadline for introduction of bills. Cal AFCOs provide a list of bills that they are currently tracking. I have highlighted a few bills of interest in the memo. On your desk are two letters supporting Cal AFCO sponsored bills. I have shared these with the chair and bring them to you now as is our policy. I don't think it's necessary to go through all the legislation today. There is a long way to go and many committees and amendments before many of these bills become anything close to a final product. Today, the purpose is to make sure that you are informed. As the process moves forward, I may come back to the commission and ask for further clarification and po any possible stance on specific bills that may be more controversial. As a member of the Calafka Legislative Committee, I'm tracking these bills and will report to you any progress towards resolving some of these issues. So far, I do not see an approach from Calafco that would be inconsistent with our commissions. And this is just a receiving file, no, so. No, no further discussion on it then. Yep. Um, number C, um, 8C, Executive Officer uh, Miscellaneous Items, Mr. Knox. Yes. 
Uh, your staff has published a notice in the local papers on the, Cal on the LAFCO website for the unrestricted public member seat. Uh, it is coming up uh, in May. It will be vacated. Uh, we have also informed interested parties, including special districts, city clerks, and clerks of the Board of Supervisors in case anyone knows of someone who might be interested in this position. The deadline for applications is this Friday. We'll be bringing this before the commission for the April meeting. Uh, the person picked by the commission will be seated at the May meeting. The restricted public member alternate seat is, is currently va vacant. If we receive enough applicants, we might be possible that we can fill that seat as well. That would be the, the alternate to uh, Commissioner Fowler. Uh, there are no term limits for LAFCO commissioners other than for the city seats, for both the special districts and public member seats, the incumbents have the ability to put their name in a nomination. Um, also want to point out that uh, we will be at a staff workshop in uh, April 10th through the 12th in San Jose that's put on by Cal LAFCO. Uh, I was going to say all three of our staff members are going to attend. I'm, I'm hoping we might even hire a new clerk so we can take them along and they can learn a little bit about the LAFCO process and, and, and meet some of their fellow clerks. Um, so that's, that's one thing we're working on. And lastly, our next meeting is April 24th at 5, 5 p.m. here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, number nine, closed session. There is no closed session today. Number 10. We're adjourned. Thank you.